Is that a mouse nest? Absolutely. That's a mouse nest. This is all we got. Uh oh. It's actually oh. the best looking carburetor I've seen sitting. Whoa! Yeah! Oh, gross. I I'm not real big on the chrome rims. Although oh, it looks wait. pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. He's an old fuddy duddy. Guys, today we are working on a Jacobson 321 engine. It's something like three horse, two stroke engine. We're gonna see if this thing runs. The engine's stuck right now, but it's fairly complete. It's looking pretty good. Carburetor is doing its thing. So I, I have I have a pretty good feeling on this engine. John's in the house doing some work. So he left me and Charles in here to play around. So we're gonna get this Jacobson running and then we're gonna see which mini bike we're gonna put it on. Today's video is sponsored by Hone Health. So what we have here is a bird mini bike. It's a Nighthawk. It's pretty cool, it's from the late 60s. The wheels, unfortunately, are pretty bad shape. I don't think there's any chance of bringing those back, but the engine would look pretty cool in here. Don't know if it'll work yet, but this is one of our contestants for today. So our next victim, I mean, possibility is that this old scat cat and it's a model number ayt 660 i also picked this up at the same time as that bike and it was I, it was less than 100 bucks fairly complete it's just minus the engine so if the engine fits in here that'll be a good thing too so uh first things first let's get right to that jacobson and try to get it running sounds good man thanks david for giving us this Jacobson engine. We're gonna work on getting it unstuck. I'm gonna pull the spark plug, get this cover off so we can rock the engine back and forth slowly and hopefully we can free it up. Oh. Oh, gross. That's a, oh, that's, oh. Is that a mouse nest? Absolutely. That's a mouse nest. Yeah. It, I hope that's why it's stuck. Did the mouse nest get stuck in the coal? It looks... Well, there, there the coil, is the coil. Well, where is on. the coil? Underneath? It is. It's underneath because... Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, that That is... Oh, oh wait. Hey, you got it. Beach. Yeah. Oh, Johnny. Here, I'll oh, he's, he's hey, hanging. buddy. Oh, you're working on that bike. Well, we're working on trying to figure it one out. of these. All right, so it does have a tight... Oh, this, this engine's no good. What is it? Is that the crank? It might be good. I don't know, man. Get a socket for that spin and we're going to spin it over. Okay. She got rod knock. Real quick, I know we don't have any spinner fast. All right. Sounds like rod knock to me, doesn't it? Yeah. Unfortunately, as you guys heard, this one's pretty well roached. We had this one as a spare, so we're going to check this one out. First thing we noticed is right in the intake, there's a huge dirt dauber nest so this is going to have to come off and clean out that dirt dauber nest because we don't need to crank this thing up and, and suck in a bunch of dirt and everybody watching please pray for me so i don't tear these gaskets yeah because we don't have any no spare I, have, parts. I have this one and this one on here so between the two hopefully we don't you know let's, yeah. let's hope we can this, save one of them this is all we got i think i'm gonna need a wrench for that one Oh. Ooh, buddy. Aha! Got some movement. But the fact that it's not moving is not good because uh kind of tells me the gasket is grabbing. Not unless there's a surprise in here I don't know about because well, I've never, never had one of these apart. Do you think we're do you, behind there might be the reeds? Gasket. Just, gasket is ripping. Oh. Well. Hey. Oh. Yeah, and you can see. Oh. Oh, we can see the crankshaft. Wait, you ready? Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, that is that is an awesome shot at the rotating assembly. You notice there's no dipper. There isn't. Well, I mean it's. The fuel is sucked in right there. Yeah, I guess what <laughs> happens is the fuel 
and oil mix goes in there and it just kind of saturates everything and it makes its way to the combustion chamber yep and boom goes the dynamite and out the exhaust oh goodness all right so uh, okay. it looks like we got to unbolt this yeah those are the reeds that i was talking about and uh we'll be able to clean this thing out all right so I've cleaned out the inside of the engine since it was so nasty and it's sitting there drip drying. I've got some, uh, some oil in there and just gonna, just kind of letting it run on out so we don't make a huge mess over here on uh, Charles's toolbox. Meanwhile, Charles, Charles has taken the breather off. <laughs> nice wave, dude. <laughs> and the carburetor and we're gonna, we're gonna try to fit everything from that engine on the other one and with an added bonus of we are going to be able to look in at the crankshaft on that thing and look and see how bad damage apart it really is yes yeah you can tell that someone's been in here a while just how stressed these flathead screws are okay oh that's interesting that spring went to the choke that hole you see how it's scratched uh yes. yeah the inside yes. one all right inside it's on camera and that, yeah, and that's also the kill switch, too. Yep. That's what Interesting. I thought. Yeah, so this engine was, like like you said, fairly complete, literally only missing the gas line and whatever it was originally hooked to. Yep. Like, what is this? It's dirt. <laughs> no, it's maybe, like... Maybe it, some dog hair like, and who knows where it was at. Horse hair, if it was on a farm. I don't know. Yeah. There's like three different... Hopefully the air filter did its job and kept it out from inside the engine. You know, I've never heard of a Jacobson until these engines. Until today. Yeah, pretty much. Right, so That's the governor. Yeah, and on that engine, this is disconnected. I think if you turn it a certain way, it'll it'll just come off. There we go. Yep, you were right. Yeah. It was so dirty I couldn't see it. Okay, the inside of that looks pretty good. Good, and the gasket on this one's good too. Sweet. So, so we're gonna clean all that with some brake clean and. The inside looks. Shine it up. Great. Yeah, we're gonna we drop the bowl on it. Got it. Just enough. Ooh, hold on the gasket. Yeah, gotta be careful with that gasket. Yeah. I'm hoping that this one's gonna be the gasket we can use. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Good. Oh yeah, I'd call that good, wouldn't you? Clean it up at the base. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. The reeds are the reeds are in good shape too. Yeah, that piece looks like the piece that we're gonna put on the other one. Meanwhile, we are down to the crankshaft, so let's uh, turn this thing and take a look in there. Oh, is it the wrist pin? Wait, look at down in in there at the piston. It's the wrist pin, isn't it? All right, y'all. Y'all uh, probably can just make out the wrist pin on the piston is shot. So it's not the bearing; it's the wrist pin that is the problem. So, which is uh, bad news for us because we definitely can't use that engine without a rebuild. Yeah. No. So maybe in the future we'll be looking into a rebuild. Meanwhile, we have the uh, spare engine. Yeah, and from, from taking apart weed eaters in the past, that's usually a needle bearing in there on the wrist pin. So that's which, probably what failed. Which means there's needle bearings inside this engine or something. Yeah, chunks of it. So we're grabbing the exhaust off this thing next. Pray for the bolts. Well, that's good. Well, that one was soaking in PB. Yeah. Or two, or two stroke. Oh. All right. Not bad. Not too bad, bud. Oh, and we got an exhaust gasket. Oh, well. oh it's broken. Well, it's, it'll be fine. Well, we it's... just want to hear this thing fire up. It's an interesting exhaust, man. No expansion chamber, really. I guess maybe the... Maybe... Maybe there's a little bit of expansion, oh, and you but not take much. This, you can take this apart. I saw that. And so you can change the back pressure on it, I guess. Maybe. Interesting. Never messed with it. Or the wadding. Oh, is, that what you, is that what you would call it on a Man, I have no idea. 
I think we grabbed everything we need to yeah. try yeah. initial fire up. And we will be sticking some rags in here. Yes. So this is going to go into storage because uh, I think it's worth coming back and visiting this one like a rebuild or whatever if we really like the Jacobson engine you know the other one if it works out all right we've been putting a ton of hours into this two-stroke project and i'm honestly feeling a little bit worn down because of it but uh as i've been approaching the big 3-0 i'm kind of down on energy anyway uh it takes me a little bit longer to get out of bed in the morning uh my focus isn't quite as sharp as it used to be and sometimes on days off all i do is lay in bed because that's all i have energy for all that to say is that I'm looking for some drive back. So I've kind of tried to tackle fixing it myself, but it's been like throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Well, it turns out that these things are pretty common with guys as we age. In fact, Ike was telling me the other day that that was about your age, John, is when I started to feel my energy decline. Uh, and if you're feeling like you have less energy or focus throughout the day, you probably have low testosterone. But don't worry, at least 30 million men in the U.S. have low testosterone today. And did you know that testosterone levels have gone down over generations too? Our father's generation had 25% higher testosterone levels than the generations now. So it's not our fault. It's more like environmental changes and similar stuff are affecting our daily lives. That's where home health comes in. A lot of people think that testosterone is just a hormone for the bedroom, but it does so much more. Optimizing testosterone can lead to increased energy, muscle mass, focus, and a better overall mood. See, Hone helps men get tested and treatment for low testosterone straight from their homes. It's super simple. All you have to do is collect your sample and mail it back to them at the lab. Once you have your results, you'll video chat with an actual doctor who will recommend a personalized treatment plan based on your biomarkers and symptoms. These options include FDA approved medications and it all comes straight to your door. I am definitely not a medical expert, but Hone Health is and they are here to help you out. Order Hone's easy to use at home assessment today to learn your testosterone levels. For limited time only, viewers get the at home testing and a doctor consultation for only $45. Click the link in the description below or go to honehealth.com slash cars and cameras to take advantage now. All right, special thanks to Hone again for being today's sponsor. Let's get back to this two stroke. So we're gonna be uh, getting this out of the way because right now we're done with it and we're gonna grab the other engine out of the trash can. <laughs> yeah, I just got here and I see an engine in the trash can and we're like, okay, so we're using this one. No, we're yeah, using the we're trash using can the engine. engine. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, just draining. Yeah, so I, I sprayed it out and, and there was plenty of oil in there and I didn't want it to make a, a huge mess on, on this box here. So it's draining, ready to bring it over here. Final assembly, well, not final assembly, but test fire assembly. Yeah. And uh, we don't even know if that has spark yet. Yeah. So we're let's just get to it. Alrighty. Uh, ooh, I dropped it. That's alright. We've got one on the carburetor. Got to clean the gasket because we don't want any vacuum leaks. Because if we have any vacuum leaks on a two-stroke, it will rev. Oh, and won't it run away almost or? Uh, I don't think three horsepower is going to run away. Yeah, I don't think it's going to run away, but it will, it won't idle. That's true. We'll sit there and just rev up. Can you clean this carburetor up for me? Like yes. clean it yeah, we'll real nice on the outside and let's drop the bowl and take a look on the inside. Okay. It's not coming off. Oh, that's, that's a nice color. <laughs> How are we looking, bud? Well, got it a lot more cleaned up and uh, ready to drop the bowl on it. I can already see it. It's probably gonna have some gunk in beautiful. it. Beautiful. Oh, gentle. Ew. It's actually oh. the best looking carburetor I've seen sitting. And it's got a, what is it? A brass float? Yeah, that's cool. It is cool. Doesn't look like, look like I damaged anything, so. We get it cleaned up and put back together. Was it the pivot pin has got wear marks on how much it has been, the float has been up and down. Unless that was done on purpose. Oh no. <laughs> Those are wear marks. That's wear marks, I've never seen. Yeah, I've never seen a carburetor get used that long to wear out steel. 
that's off the uh, the one that had the uh, oh yeah bad the, the... wrist pin. Mm -hmm. Off to a great start. Yeah, I'm sure the guys already told you, but it's crazy how the carburetor bolts to the bottom of the crankcase. It's wild. Mm -hmm. Two-stroke stuff, bro. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Jet and emulsion tube all in one. Now this is two stroke stuff, so. I'm glad I pulled that. Look, paint made it all the way down in there. Or paint chips or whatever. So we're ready to check for spark? I'm ready to check for spark. The ignition on these, is it basically like a Predator 212? Flywheel mounted coil with a magnet? The uh, Basically, yes, but it's on under the flywheel. Okay. Yeah, I wish it was on the outside, but it's on the inside. But it doesn't matter. We would have had to take it off anyways because uh, the points are going to be under there. So, Charles, can I have a brand new spark plug? So we're going to check the spark, which I can tell you it ain't going to have it. Just all you gotta do is touch it. Oh, okay. Ready? Oh, we got it's spark. got spark! Woo! Yeah! Really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I didn't see it. And I didn't. Get I'll show it again. I didn't yeah, get electrocuted. All right. Here we go. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, I knew in your head. Yeah. That's what you get for making fun of me, dude. I can't believe it's got spark. So all we gotta do is install the carburetor and some two-stroke, so get that cleaned up. I'm gonna round up some fuel and uh, hopefully hear this thing fire up. Yeah. Interesting thing. Have you ever heard one, seen one crank up in reverse? Mm -mm. Two strokes will run either forward or reverse. You just have to put the uh, carburetor on the exhaust and the other forward. Really? Reverse. You don't have to put the exhaust with no, the carburetor. because all, no. all it requires is the engine to either spin one way or the other. As long as all it, the pistons as long as it moves the fuel to the yeah. to the head or the top end to the jug or whatever you want to call it, and then it exhausts it out. So it, it will run clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah, there's no camshaft, so two stroke run either way. So the carburetor is in pretty good shape, huh? Yeah, actually, surprisingly, for how long it sat, we couldn't believe it. So it doesn't even have an intake manifold. It's like it's. It's carburetor straight to, I guess, reed valves, and then whatever the reed valves bolt to. And I'm, I'm It goes through the, the block, it lubricates the bottom end, end of the engine, that means the rod, the, the main bearings, all, the le all of that before it goes to the combustion chamber. This is interesting. There we go. Yeah, there was definitely water in there. It is filthy. It's fixing to get blowed out. Oh yeah. Let's get the exhaust on. Yeah, you want to make the gasket or just bolt it over? We're just gonna bolt it up right now. At least we got a runner. I, I, I hope so. This is wide oh, yeah. open. That's idle. Good. So down is idle. Choke on, and oh, that's off. That's ignition. Okay. That's off. Off. Okay. Well, that's on. Going. That's choke. That's also off. Okay. Zip tie. So we're gonna just run it at idle. Okay. All right. So you remember you got to pull it off. Yep. All right. Let me let's get some fuel to it. Nice. Oh, we already got a leak. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, are you pressing the button, or is it the button? Oh, oh. It's pressing the drain button. Okay. So it's, That's still, it's still a little dribble, yeah. but All right, let me get a, I was uh, worried about that. I mean, if yeah. there's a button that you'd think it'd have a seal that's it gone did have by a now. It did have a seal, uh, but right. I tried. I left it alone. All right, All right. that'll work. That, that'll work. All right. Yeah, there. Yeah. Boy. Yes. Take off the coat.
Hold on, guys. This sounds great. What's that? What's that? What's that? That don't sound good. <laughs> it, it, it stay on the gas, it won't not. Let's see if the kill switch works. Not what bad. is that noise, though? Uh, oh. I don't know. Let's not worry about it. Okay. Hey, <laughs> nice job, guys. Thank you. Charles? Yeah, man. All right. So, I just... I just want to prove a point that a two-stroke can run backwards. Let's go to the forward. Yeah, and I've, forward got way it, again. I've got it in. Let's see, to the right. So we're going to run it clockwise now. Count, count, no, we're going to go the regular normal way. All go right. ahead. All right, that's the normal way. All right, I'm going to cut it off. All right, now go backwards. All right, lefty Lucy. <laughs> This one might not run in reverse. It might not be making spark in reverse. Oh. Try it again. Okay. Try it forward. Try it forward. Try it again. Oh, I shut it off. Yeah. Like it doesn't have doesn't, spark. It doesn't like it. Try it forward. Try it forward. All right. All right. I was wrong. I'm sorry. This one doesn't want to run in reverse. You think it's a spark thing? It, it, probably a spark thing. It might not make spark in reverse because it didn't seem like it changed at we, all with hey, the ignition. We can find out real quick. Yeah. Let's find out. Before. Alright, try the other way. Very, very weak. It's it's less spark. Yeah, it's very weak, so I'm thinking. So I guess it has something to do with the coil. It only goes good one way and not the other. So I've seen two strokes run backwards. I was hoping that this one was gonna just kind of prove the point, but apparently it's not gonna prove my point. So But it runs! And and I mean, it's awesome. That's the most important. Yeah. Absolutely. It sounds great, guys. It does. Other than that, you know, thing that we're not going to talk about. A little rattle noise? Yeah. At running RPM, it didn't sound too bad. So that's where we're going to yeah. keep it. So I'm really excited to say this Jacobson engine runs again, and it sounds really sweet. Charles, thank you for your help with this. I oh, think, yeah. no problem. you know. Good day at work. Good day at work. So next thing we're going to figure out is which bike is going to get this engine. And uh, hopefully take it for a test drive then. Absolutely. We really love the look of the bird and it's going to be equally as difficult to make this engine work on both bikes. So we're going with this. But we have our work cut out for us. It's really, really rusty. The wheels are shot. So we're going to see if we can repair them and uh, get this engine going on there. We're going to have to get these tires off the rims so we can try to repair the rusted out rims because I would really love to save these rims because they're just really cool. I've never seen anything like them, so. Yeah, so uh, we got our works like cut out for us. Let's get started. And uh, yeah, that's it. All that's gotta happen before yeah. we put the engine on. So we're gonna try to just loop it up real good and, and give it a lot of sh hammer. Hammer time. It's either all or nothing on this thing, I'll tell you. That thing is going to free up all of a sudden. <laughs> Ike is going to have it in his lap. Right, Give us some more PB Blaster on there. Look at that. There we go. Uh-oh. Oh, it's a one-way. It's a one-way wheel. It's a one -way wheel. <laughs> the whole bolt is turning. All right, Charles, I got an idea. Do you have a uh, an impact and socket we can put on this to take yeah. it off? Oh, 
It left them. Perfect. Holy cow. It left the threads. So that can be reused. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I gotta turn the camera on for this, cause look, look how bad this twist grip was. Did you cut it open? Yeah. Oh. Oh, gross. That's aluminum. Yep. That was an aluminum twist grip handle like that you were talking about, the good ones, but that's when they go bad. But at least it's off. So the plan is we're gonna do everything we can on this bike, minus the rims, since the uh, rims are in such bad shape. Uh, what we can do is place the engine in here, make the mount, get it all adjusted up, chain lined up and everything. Uh, I feel like we need to address this rear brake a little bit. Uh, the, <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen a rubbing pad with the friction brakes rub almost in half. So this bike was well used. I wish I knew the kid that had it. Uh, the rims. The rims. Oh my gosh, the rims. I've got an idea on these rims. These, these things, there's no hope for them. Like repairing except I'm thinking we're gonna cut the rear section of the hub out and I found some some outside rims from a spoke bike and I think that we can set this this hub down right in the middle of a brand new outer rim whatever you call it and uh, weld these spokes together and possibly bring these rims back to life I think it's a great idea so we still get the the cool five spoke look but Yes, yes, that's a, uh, that's my hope. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to work, but I mean, I'm not going to just throw them away without trying. So it's the cars and cameras way to do things. Think around the box. In this case, around the rim. This is the original twist grip, probably part of it from 1969. Uh, earlier than that. Woo! Oh man, that's some thick wall tubing. We're fine. You missed a spot. So we're gonna trim this engine plate to fit on here so we can weld some uh, blocks here where the engine can mount to it and then we can bolt it on and adjust it. That's a good look. I'm gonna need some kind of rear fender to give a little bit of protection of that air filter, but. Well, uh, we got that. And there actually already has fender brackets. We will need to trim. This oh, yeah. One to fit in between. Yeah, that is gonna be sometimes. sweet. But they're already there. Just, just need to drill the holes in the right spot. There we go. All right. Let me just spin that a little So we're gonna set this up. Doing some uh, scotch brake. Oh, nope. Sweet. And now the eyeballage begins. Yep. Lining up that sprocket with our rear sprocket, all while making it clear. That whole Ike. section back there. Ike's got to break out the what is it? The the Ike chronometer. The Ike chronometer. We spent the day yesterday at Busco preparing for Mini Mayhem. A little, a little sore. And we're tired, <laughs> but it's all right. The uh, bird's about to go into the knife. So we had a, a rusty spot on the front seat bracket that we're gonna weld a washer on the bottom side to give it a little bit more strength. And guess what? The rear bracket is broken as well. So we're gonna weld that up. Should be good to go to put a nice, either go power sports seat on there or whatever we end up making. Everything we needed is welded and now cleaned up and the bike is somewhat looking like a bike again. We're now gonna install the engine, figure out our chain positioning situation. We might have to make a tensioner to make it go around that big chunk of frame right there. This sweet one of a kind motor plate that Isaac himself made. So there's the mounting holes, match up to that. Oh boy, let me make sure. Okay, so that's the front, there we go. It's crazy how those two little slits are the only exhaust port. Oh man. Well, 
looks awesome in there, dude. It does. Yeah, it looks super I was super distracted. Cool. I had a grade 8 bolt go in my kneecap. Oh. There we go. All right. We'll just make sure we've got it spaced enough. Well, I pro I'm probably going to go ahead and just wrap this tube with electrical tape just to make sure we don't have any arcing. We need a boot for it, but I'll either find a boot or wrap that. Testing purposes. Yeah. All right, so the bike's looking killer. The engine looks like it belongs in the frame to begin with. And now we're going to run our chain, which brings us to our sponsor, GoPowerSports.com. They sent us this pre-stretched DID racing chain. It's gold. It looks cool. And honestly, for this application, it's completely overkill. This is a three-horsepower engine. This is probably going to be a lifetime chain as long as we don't put it in the sand and keep it lubricated. Uh, on this application. So they can sell you a pre-stretch racing chain. They can sell you a cheap chain. They can sell you a 35, 420. They can sell you sprockets, sprocket hubs, clutches, all your go-kart and mini-bike driveline needs from where, Charles? GoPowerSports.com. <laughs> yeah, you can check out all the parts we're using for this build, this chain, engine mount, some other bits and pieces in the description of this video. Let them know. Cars and cameras sent you anytime you place an order with them. Turns out this isn't the gold chain option, but they do have gold chain. Oh yeah, I've got that on my race cart. It 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 held up the entire dust bowl, if that tells you anything. Oh man. It's not gonna do it. So it's rubbing on the frame? Oh bummer. So we're gonna have to make some sort of tensioner right there. It's close, but it's I mean we're gonna rub a hole in that frame. Yeah, that's not good. What we got here are two tensioner options, the classic skateboard wheel slightly more sophisticated uh, idler bearing sprocket wheel. Uh, it's gotta have to go somewhere around here, dude, because it, yeah. it just needs to get around this spot right here. I mean, it's gonna add a ton of chain, but again, it's not like it makes a ton of horsepower, so we need to worry about where. Yeah, I say a skateboard wheel, man, because it's... Yeah. And you know, we might get lucky we might be able to weld something to the, the Go Power Sports engine plate. And make it all just one piece. And make it all one piece that moves with the motor. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So what we did is we cut the head off of the bolt. We're gonna weld it to our Go Power Sports engine plate, which means that we're gonna uh, retain our idea and goal of not modifying or welding to this frame at all. And if this is enough, perfect. If it's not, we're gonna need to put a little a little tab on the uh, foot peg here, but no biggie. Robert. Yep. That's a winner. Of course, the less visible side looks great. Ike is back, and he's got some wheels for us. Well, I have pieces of wheels. My thought was I really like the five spoke wheels that are on the bird and since the outside of the rim is so rotten this outer rim we can take the spokes out of the center of this and maybe we can marry the outer part of the rim to the inner part of the hub of the bird and keep the same look of the wheels. Maybe. Sounds good. We can try it. So update, we're gonna abandon the five spokes. For now. These, for now, because the wire looking wheels look pretty sweet. So we just put the tire back on the wheel. And uh, we have the front wheel from the dirt bike on here. And as long as we can tweak that front fender a little bit, it's gonna look really stinking cool. We got a Go Power Sports seat on there and a fuel tank we had laying around up there too. This thing is not far. Let's check it out, man. Looking good. Ooh. Oh gosh. No, this thing's really cool. I like the way the, the chrome rims with the rusty frame. I, I'm not real big on the chrome rims. Although oh, it looks pretty cool. It yeah. looks pretty cool. He's an old fuddy duddy. I'd rather have the uh, original rims though. Yeah, okay, but they're <laughs> wall hangers now, unfortunately. Hey, rolls? How'd you make didn't it? didn't do anything to it. Wait, what was wrong with it? Roll. No. The tire was a little bit too large for the brake. Yeah. Self clearing. Oh, I gotta turn on the fuel.
Oh, someone forgot a master link or the clip. Dang it! I wasn't here! Okay, we're fixed. All right, take two. It's got the power! It's got the power, all right. Oh, no! <laughs> all right, we made my kid's first mini bike. <laughs> it's perfect! <laughs> So I don't think uphill is his thing. No. He definitely needs a, a bigger gear on the back. It's too tall. Yeah. Nope. Uh -oh. And it's gone. Oh, the rear sprocket just broke. Oh, crap, I welded that too. Is that what's happening? You, hey, I'm ripping that it's gap just well both I'm on the me. gap welder sticker off your helmet. Well, it came unscrewed. Oh, this okay. rocket did. So it came yeah. unscrewed. Uh, the the welds didn't hold. Okay. Oh. So. Well. Uh, yeah. Um. <coughs> oh, I see. I, I think I see how y'all did that. Okay. Well, the the problem we ran into. We repurposed some of the uh, yeah, electric bikes. This, that's uh, fine. Hey, that's the electric bike. The sprocket through. is on the right hand side. Oh, so it's. So when it, it when it drives it, it tightens up on the. Uh, it tight. Yeah. The the that makes the free sense. wheel. Since you guys had to put it on that side, it loosens it. So it loosens it. So we had place. it tack welded, and we only did four tack welds. I think we need to put a more solid weld. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we need a better gear anyway. We need a better gear. It didn't seem to want to like so really. You, so you really want a you want a, a bigger. We one want a larger okay. sprocket. This thing will probably ride really good with a larger sprocket. It was peppier than I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it it never reached the full engagement. Dude, the clutch never engaged. So, the yeah. clutch <laughs> never engaged. So, uh, gosh, this thing's probably geared for like freaking eighty miles per hour or something. <laughs> I like it. It's cool. All right, so uh, we built the slowest mini bike, probably of all time. But it's killer. It's a little two stroke from the '60s. We figured. Probably yeah. Uh, we got to give Go Power Sports a call about getting us a bigger sprocket for the rear so the gearing will be better and we'll take this thing for a proper test drive. So subscribe to Cars and Cameras to see that episode. Leave us a thumbs up if you want more two-stroke content. Uh, thanks for watching and we will catch you next time. I get to go ring the bell because I was right. Glad he's so easily entertained. Well, it's your bell. You get to ring it every time Isaac's right, but I was right. <laughs>